no. You really don't want to tell us? No. As you like, young fella. Have you thought about it carefully? Mm -hmm. All right. I hope you're not going to regret it later. Friends, here we have a good troll who, instead of running away with his friends, decided to stay with us and get a good education. Fine, we could teach him arithmetic. <laughs> Algebra. Um, history. And we'll teach them good manners, too. <laughs> Oh, Pat, you're going to graduate with flying colors. Oh, no, no, please, anything but that. <laughs> I'd rather die. I'll teach you to wash every day with rose-scented soap so you'll smell nice. No, not soap. I'll tell you everything. The whole thing was planned by Holler. All right, all right. And where have the other trolls gone now? <laughs> Up north, we were going to aggravate a herd of reindeer. Where exactly? I'm not sure. In the mountains, in Snowy Valley. Thank you. Come on, folks. We'll get them out of the trap. Let's go. <laughs> Once a troll, always a troll. We've got to teach them not to spoil our wedding parties. All 
done. Oh, there they you. are, sleeping like babies. for a long time and they won't be bothering anybody. We'll all have a rest. <laughs> I hope they've learned that brains will triumph over brawn every time. <laughs> we all wish you much happiness in a long life. We've come to see you off on your honeymoon. Thank you. Our friends the geese are ready to take you wherever you want to go. In any part of the world, the animals will welcome you. You'll never lack for a place to stay. And don't worry about your house. It will be spick and span when you get back home. Goodbye. Thank you, David. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a good flight. David knows it's always good to be friendly with your neighbors. What he doesn't know is how mysterious his neighbors really are. When his granddaughter Susan comes to visit, a frisky cat pays an unexpected visit too. Is it just bad luck, or have the mysterious neighbors really cast a magic spell? Watch next time as to Grandmother's House we go. queen was sitting doing her needlework. As she worked, from time to time she would glance up to see the snow falling outside. And because she did so, she accidentally pricked her finger with her needle. Because the blood that fell from her finger looked so very beautiful on the snow, the queen murmured to herself the following thought. I would love to have a little girl with skin as white as the snow and lips as red as this blood. 
and hair as black as the blackest raven in the winter sky. The queen's wish was to come true. For soon after that, the queen gave birth to a little baby girl. Sadly, however, this good and gracious queen drew her last breath just after the child was born. The baby who was left behind was just as her mother had wished her to be. A princess with skin as white as snow, raven black hair, and with rosy red cheeks and lips. Oh, there, 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 no matter, no matter. You can cry all you want, but all the tears in the world won't bring your mother back. But Doris, your loving nursemaid, will cuddle you until you feel quite happy again, dear. Your mother, the queen, left me to watch over and care for you. And that I shall, my dear little princess. This tiny princess, who had lost her mother, was named Snow White. Snow White grew, as babies do, and then she crawled, and then she stood up, and then she was ready to walk. Come to Doris there, see how well we're walking today. And upsy daisy <laughs> The king, Snow White's father, was so busy ruling the country that the child was brought up by her nursemaid, Doris. And then, one year later, a new member of the royal family was welcomed into the castle, a new queen. This queen was very beautiful indeed. It was rumored there was no one in the entire kingdom whose beauty could equal hers. The queen possessed many treasures and wealth beyond imagining, but her most precious possession was a strange and mysterious mirror. I am ready. Tell me true, mirror, mirror on the wall, tell me once again, who is the fairest of them all? You are commanded to speak the truth. No woman in the entire kingdom can match your beauty, my queen. You know that I speak the truth. There is no question, there is no doubt. You are the fairest in the land. Tell me again. Your wish is my command, O oh queen. For truly, in all the land, you are the fairest of them all, my queen. When the queen heard the words of the mirror, she was content, for she knew that the mirror never lied. Once again, the mirror has told me I am the most beautiful woman in the entire kingdom, which of course I am. What a beautiful little girl. Tell me, what is her name? The child is named Snow White, your majesty. She is the daughter of the former queen. I'm pleased to have finally met her. I can see why I've heard so much about her. I've heard that her mother was quite beautiful, which means that Snow White will no doubt become a beautiful princess. We must take very good care of her indeed. My goodness, Her Majesty seems to be in a very good mood today. This is the first time she's ever taken notice of our little Snow White. Whenever she comes out of that room, she's always in a good mood. Ten years passed, and Snow White became a young lady of grace and beauty. Snow White! Snow White! Snow White, where are you? Hmm? Hey, Snow White, Doris is looking all over for you. She's coming. I heard her, Clouds. Hurry, climb up here. Huh? If Doris sees you, she'll know where I'm hiding. Please hurry and climb up the tree. Well, all right, but I'm certainly tired of hiding. And you know how I hate climbing trees. <laughs> is that so? This is easy. If you think climbing trees is hard, then you should try your hand at sewing and embroidery. My mother always seems happiest when she's doing her needlework. She even sings to herself. But I think I have far more talent for climbing tall trees than I ever will for needlework. What you really mean is that you've become very good at climbing trees because you love to eat the apples, right? Strange, isn't it? How you've become talented at something because of your big appetite. Oh, you. <laughs> No white come down here this instant. You're up in that tree again, aren't you? And Klaus is up there with you, isn't he? Oh, what am I going to do with you? Klaus, you're the one who's taught my precious little princess such naughtiness. It's hard to believe that you're the son of a nobleman. You've insulted a nobleman. Now we must duel. Doris? Well, what is it? Would you like a nice juicy red apple? They're lovely and sweet now. Really? Oh. I'm not going to fall for one of your tricks this time. Come down here right now. You have a very important matter to attend to. 